Today's episode takes us to Water Town in Makueni County. We'll bring you real stories of beneficiaries of blood donation and transfusion. We'll also get to discuss more on this topic with experts and Wanainchi later on on the show, as well as bring you a word from the Ministry of Health Command Center with the Cabinet Secretary. Whenever a patient needs blood, it is always an emergency, life-saving situation. Now, such situations always happen every single day across our hospitals. Blood is indeed a critical component to life. You lose it, you die. It is this conversation that we want to have today on this episode of Maishani Health, Blood Transfusion. And today we come to you from the great county of Makueni. Let's now join my colleague, Bentura Kwamboka, for more. Makueni County, formerly Makueni District, in the former eastern province of Kenya. Geographically, it borders Kajiado County to the west, Kitui County to the east, Taita Taveta County to the south, and Machakos County to the north. Although it's in an arid and semi-arid area of the country, Makueni County is known for its horticultural farming and also as a wildlife habitat that houses Savo East, Savo West and Kyulu National Parks. I'm Christopher Ndonya, I'm a member of the community. I'm a staff. Kwanani E, ni kapata donors lakini ile ile ile, ile bank yao kwanza wakatumia hiyo ikanisaidia 2022 mm. January ndio ilikuwa sasa ilikuwa serious, serious. nilitoka hapa nyumbani nikaenda hospitali hospitali nikawa sasa si siki vizuri nikamwelezea mama watoto mm. sasa pile tuliingia ndani akapimwa ndamu uh, daktari akasema hana ndamu yeyote ni katika mwili wake akawa ameenda in coma tukampeleka jeno hapo jeno ndio daktari sasa aliona the best thing ni kumweka kumuongeza ndamu vile aliongezwa ndamu tu hivi akaamka na akapata akapata nafu na akaanza kuongea kuanzia tuseme kitu kama saa 4 hivi mpaka saa 5 usiku ndio nilikutuka mahali niko nilikuwa sijijui sijisiki Kongopa nilikuwa na ongopa ndio lakini naye nusu nilikuwa sijijui ai kumbe nilikuwa naenda vile nilikuwa nasikia vile nilimwona nikawa namuita Christopher ani ajibu Christopher ajibu baba chonda hata niangali mimi saa hiyo nikashtuka tu nikajiuliza sasa mzee ameenda kusungumza hata kulikuwa nimechanganyikiwa tuseme hivyo nikiongea hii naongea vitu vingine control nikiuliza swali naongea vitu vingine control lakini sababu ya ule upungufu wa ndamu baada ya ndamu kuongezwa kafanya kazi bas saa hii anafanya kazi kama kawaida hata kwa shamba hapa huwa anaamka anakuja anasurvive anafanya kazi kidogo kwa ngombe anaenda anafanya kitu kidogo analisha nkuku na kwa ajili ya hiyo ndamu imempea uhai ugonjwa wa kusha ndamu si rahisi mimi sio sitamani mtu mwingine apatikane nao. Lakini mambo ya dawa NHIF. Yeah. Ndio nasimamia hiyo inagaramia ki. Kuna watu wengi sana wanaumia. Na ugonjwa wengi sana wanaumia. Ni kazi nilifanya miaka 38. Na hiyo miaka 38 maisha niliona ikienda sababu ya kukosa ndamu. Tupendane, kupendana ni kupenda uhai wa mwingine 
unapotoa damu ya damu yako inasaidia wao mwingine kwa hivyo kama mtu ana uwezo anasikia huo wito atoa damu asaidia mwingine maisha yaendelee tujenge Kenya yetu maisha ni maisha ni maisha ni health maisha ni health maisha ni health maisha ni health The Kenya Blood Transfusion and Transplant Service uh, originally started off as the Kenya National Blood Transfusion Service. Blood is really the center of uh, a healthcare system. Every mother who is giving birth needs to have blood on standby and available. Every major surgery that is being done requires to have blood on standby. In uh, cancer treatments, through chemotherapy, in treatment of kidney disease, through dialysis, then we also have accidents which occur on an ongoing basis. Uh, most of the patients who will be receiving those treatments need transfusion at some point, whether it is whole blood or it is uh, blood products. And so when you think about the healthcare system, if you are going to actually make an impact, you must have blood available to transfuse the patients, otherwise they will not be able to get the treatments and they have to have waiting times. When we donate blood, what happens to it? What process does it undergo? We are here at the Kenya Blood Transfusion and Transplant Center to find out. After blood is collected, we get uh, blood in the pint and uh, two vacutainers for each uh, blood. Then uh, transportation happens. Blood is brought to the banks. Then it is stored in the cold room. Once that storage happens, if, for example, if it's for components preparation, it goes direct for processing. Then from processing, it will also undergo testing for the mandatory tests that are recommended by WHO. That is for HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and syphilis. And then we have the purple top that goes for blood grouping, where we determine the blood types. You know the different blood types? We have A, B, A, B, O, and then the negatives of all of them. Those are the blood types that we carry out in the country, but there are several other blood types that are there in the world. So after blood has been uh, tested, processing I mean being turned into different components. That is, uh, we have uh, fresh frozen plasma, which are very good for people with burns and uh, accidents who are bleeding. Then we have also platelets that help in, uh, they have clotting factors. Then uh, we also prepare packed cells. Packed cells will remove the plasma bit, then we are left with the packed cells. That does not cause overload in the body. Then we also prepare the PD packs for the uh, small children. So once that happens, for screening has happened, then blood grouping has happened, there is what we call labeling. Once the testing happens, we have results. For example, if there is any blood that is infected, during labeling, we sort, especially now, now we are using the the blood bank management uh, system where we create labels. So the blood is labeled with the labels and status. Then the blood group type is also given. Then that blood is now screened and ready for use. So from there now we start uh, issuing to the transfusing facilities. That is the hospitals. They come and collect the blood or sometimes we we even uh, distribute the blood to where it is required. So now we are going to the ward. Mm -hmm. yeah, we are going to transfuse the patient. Oh, so it seems like it, it's an emergency case with three pints of blood in two days. Yeah, because he has anemia of 6.6. 6. Yeah. Oh, okay. 6.2. Yeah. 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 One of the things that uh, has been the mandate of the National Blood, was the mandate of the National Blood Transfusion Service, was to be able to collect blood, be able to test it for safety and ensure that every unit that is given to all our patients is declared safe and so you're not getting what you call adverse reactions or reactions that are related to transfusion services or you're also not uh, from a health facility in uh, giving somebody blood that is infected with uh, transfusion transmittable diseases we call it uh, such as uh, HIV such as syphilis such as hepatitis uh, B and C and those we test for every unit of blood. 
So the second mandate was to ensure the safety of blood that is collected. And the third mandate was to ensure availability, that is uh, by having satellite centers and having a distribution system. Uh, in the universal health coverage, blood transfusion is a very critical component in the health sector. And with that in mind, we are going to meet Mwikali, who is a patient who has been diagnosed with a condition that requires blood transfusion. Come with me. 2021, Daktari mwenye alikuwa leba aliniambia nipande kwa kitanda nipushi mtoto na nikikaa chini nasikia nakalia mtoto. Walinipeleka theater sababu njia haikuweko. Alafu daktari mmoja akaja kanielezea. Kaniambia nili bleed sana theater. Walitoa uterus nisiende. Sasa hapo ndio walinipima hiyo ndamu wakaniletea ndamu wakaniweka. Walinyongezea <laughs> ama imefika kiwango ile walikuwa anataka ile mwili inataka after kunielezea nataka ndamu hiyo saa hiyo saa hiyo wakati hiyo ndamu ilikuja eh na ikiisha daktari on the duty ananiweka lingine mpaka hizo five pains zikaisha on the right side ndio kuongezewa ndamu mimi nasikia poa eh naendelea poa hiyo kuvimba nilikuwa nimefimba nimefura niko sawa serikali yetu nasema iendelee na hiyo mtindo wa kusaidia watu wale wamepungukiwa na damu. Mimi ninaweza waambia wanjitokezee watolewe ndamu ili isaidie watu wengine kama mimi. Sababu singeongezewa hiyo ndamu na ilikuwa point tano ningeenda kwa, kwa Mola na niache mtoto akiwa yatima. Maisha ni maisha ni he. You know, Christopher and Mwikali's case has really opened my eyes on this subject that most Kenyans don't know about. But you know, the blood from the National Blood Bank has really saved their lives. And the most interesting thing is that these services are usually behind the scenes. But the impact that it has on Kenyans is really massive. You can't do this without partnership. So we have partnered with Rotary Clubs, Red Cross, uh, some of the universities, the Kenya Defense Forces, uh, the police. We are slowly beginning to get to a place where you have a lot more people saying, actually, this is something that we can do. The second strategy, in addition to partnerships, is the blood banking information system. The Damuke blood banking management system was developed uh, in order to uh, assure accountability for blood and blood products in the country and also um, uh, get a way to communicate to blood donors. Uh, as it were, it were before, we were not able to communicate to our blood donors. So Damu KE uh, comes with the benefit of uh, being able to interact with the blood donors. And also, as they donate blood, again, uh, we are able to um, manage that blood in a countable manner and ensure that uh, we track and trace the unit of blood that is from the vein of the donor to the vein of the patient. The system was developed in that we can manage blood transfusion services, uh, bring in all the stakeholders in terms of uh, the blood banks and also the hospitals that uh, utilize our blood to serve uh, Kenyans. We held the first blood and transplant conference which was very successful, whereby we had more than 800 delegates attending to the conference. People are, they have realized that we, are, that we have issues of blood. The other thing is that we have been doing different innovations. As you go to the clinic during the first terms, you, you are accompanied by your spouse. We make the father-to-be to be a donor. And by the time you are going to nine months, 
he or she will have donated more than two to three times. In uh, Turkana County, they have used the sports as another factor of getting blood. What they do is that we have Arsenal fans, they take their own week to donate. We want to bring the youth into the scene. We want to use our community health volunteers on how they can reach to the villages so that everybody knows about the donation. Every county right now has a satellite station, but we have counties which have more than one. Nakuru County, they have two, and Nairobi, we have two. We have six regional centers. We call them regional centers because these are the ones which have sophisticated machines and they are able to do the testing. The satellites, we don't allow them to test. The testing is done at the regional level. So those are the part of the strategies. We are here in Makueni County and we actually want to know if the residents do donate blood at all. mami. Eh, sana nataka kuuliza swali kama umewahi donate damu. Mimi sijai donate damu. Nishaipeana damu kusaidia binadamu wenzangu. I donated uh, recently and unfortunately I was one of those people who fainted. Oh no, I've never donated blood. <laughs> because as you can see I'm very anyway. First up kwa weight plus I guess once I saw somebody alikuwa ametoka from donating blood and then the person had fainted. Yes, I've done like two times now and even I'm going to donate again next month just because maybe I may fall in that situation or maybe our family member so that's why I do it. Nawai peana dam mara moja. Nilikuwa tu nataka kusaidia mtu alikuwa anataka dam. Nilikuwa na mtoto wangu alikuwa mgonjwa ndiye alikuwa wa kwanza kumtaunite ya damu kuna rafiki mwingine ambaye pia ametoa damu ameweka mara nyingi karibu 65 times we've got to get feedback from people of Makweni County on blood transfusion and blood donation and we've had quite interesting answers there many Kenyans shy away from donating blood why some of the potential donors will be scared of that needle they think it's they are going to experience a lot of pain it's not a painful procedure the others also have this fear that if I give that whole unit of blood, then I'm going to ha I may have lost a lot of blood and probably tomorrow I'm the one who is going to be in need of transfusion. Again, it's not the case because we're only put picking half a litre out of the 12 uh, that we have circulating in our body. There are people who associate blood donations, witchcraft again, which is not the case. And also have other cultures, uh, even uh, religious beliefs, where they do not believe in blood donation or even blood transfusion. I've been donating blood uh, since 2010, up to date. Huh? During the Westgate and uh, the Sinai saga, uh, I visited uh, KNH. I saw how patients do suffer. And that one gave me a spirit of uh, donating because I have the products in me uh, with the IHB. And I thought it's good uh, for me to, to be doing this uh, regularly. In 2021, we were actually able to collect 297,000 units. We are seeing progress uh, of being able to actually move towards achieving the minimum need, and the minimum need is 500,000 units. Blood transfusion services are emergency services that are needed across the country on a daily basis. As such, it is critical for both levels of government to work together to ensure availability of these services in all corners of the nation. We work very, very closely with the National Ministry of Health, especially like the National Blood Transfusion Services. We've been doing joint work. Uh, they help us sometimes with even reagents to process our blood in this county. Uh, they have even given us uh, equipment uh, for the same. We've been able to jointly uh, open a blood satellite center in Makweni County Referral Hospital, uh, where the county has uh, put a building up our staff have been trained uh, uh, by the National Ministry. Uh, currently, uh, we are deploying 14 uh, operating theatres across the county. Uh, this means every sub-county hospital is able to do its own operations. So as a county, we've been able to allocate resources uh, towards renovating uh, that satellite area. We've bought equipment and we've received some more equipment from the national government. And through that collaboration, uh, I think we've been able to jointly do good work.
in terms of having available uh, enough blood for our clients and even uh, for other areas. We continuously need to expand the infrastructure and plans are underway to set out uh, and set up another satellite uh, in Makindu Hospital so that it's able to serve uh, lower uh, Makueni. And Makueni County now is a beacon of hope for the counties in this country that actually counties can properly manage health uh, and UHC can be possible uh, even at the level of counties. Blood and human tissue require very high standard of handling along the supply chain to retain and maintain quality. Is our supply chain for this service able to assure quality? To ensure that the blood that is collected is safe, we have to do what we call a blood typing or determining the donor blood group. This is done for one reason. When a patient out there is in need of blood for transfusion, it will be easy for us to go to our stocks and be able to pick the particular blood group as requested. Number two, we do ensure that the person receiving this blood is in no way going to be infected with what we call transfusion transmissible infections. Since blood services are always called upon in emergency situations, it is critical that these services are available as near as possible to where the people live. Usually uh, a unit of blood is supposed to sit in the hospital waiting for a patient, not for a patient to wait for the unit. Are all Kenyans able to afford this critical service? Patient does not need to pay for a unit of blood for the rate to be transfused, whether it's in case of an emergency or not. The only charge is that a patient might uh, be asked to pay for is for the other processes that are involved in preparation of this unit of blood to ensure that it is safe. You're watching Maisha Ni Health. Time now for a break. When we come back, we'll have an engagement with the experts and residents of Makueni County. Maisha Ni, Maisha Ni Health. Welcome back. You're watching Maisha Ni Health. Now, have you ever donated blood? Or do you understand the benefits of blood donation? We have experts to expound more on that matter as well as answer questions from our audience. Karibuni sana to Maisha Ni Health, uh, Ministry of Health uh, talk and discussion. Uh, we are joined by our panelists. We have our host here, Fred Indimuli, who will be taking us through the whole talk. Karibuni sana. Asante sana Bentura and thank you so much dear audience for uh, being here for this edition of Maisha Ni Health. A round of applause. So let me introduce to you my panelists. Today we'll be discussing a very important topic that is blood transfusion. And uh, for that, we have Dr. Mother Stephen. Karibu sana, Dr. Mother Stephen. He is a county epidemiologist in Makwe County. Another round of applause for you. Thank you. Next to Dr. Tari, uh, we have uh, Kiprono Chepkok. He's the head of strategic partnerships and county support, Kenya Blood Transfusion and Transplant Services. Makoko. Last but not least, we have Evans Peter. Evans Peter is a county coordinator, Kenya Red Cross of Makoini County. A round of applause for the other Evans Peter. You can now have your seats. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, My Shani Health is a series of TV programs where we continue highlighting the progress and achievements of universal health coverage. Now, blood transfusion is just one of those issues that come into universal health coverage, and today we want to understand more on this topic. We'll start off with a panel discussion here, and then eventually we'll allow the audience to ask these experts the questions. When you talk about blood transfusion, uh, Dr. Tari, what exactly do we mean? Blood transfusion is actually the exchange of blood where we have uh, blood from a donor being uh, transfused into a patient who requires the blood. Mm -hmm. When is it necessary to get this blood transfusion for any human being? A normal human being always uh, has a certain uh, number of units in, in his veins at any given time. We talk between 10 to around 16 units of blood. That's like five to around eight liters of blood for an adult. To measure this, we use something known as hemoglobin mm -hmm. level. And for females, they, are, they always range between 11 to 16.5 grams per liter, and for men, between 13 to 18 grams per liter. So when you are not within that range, when you fall be below 11 and fall be below 13 for a man, that means you are, that is the time they took anemic, you don't have enough blood. Uh -huh. So uh, the doctor will always assess and say that 
this at this level you need to be transfused so that you can go up to that normal level. If I've had a very difficult day, maybe at school or at work and I'm feeling tired, can I just say uh, can I get a blood transfusion? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a big no. Uh, when you are exhausted, you are exhausted. You just require some sugars eh? for you to get more energy. But for blood, we have a lot of cardinal signs which the doctor will always see. For example, if you are getting tired even and walking after some few meters, you are not able. It's because of one thing: the red blood cells within your your system is not able to transport enough oxygen for ensure that we have the production of energy. We don't want to go to those terms for mm -hmm. you to get that energy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Now, awareness levels in as far as blood donation itself is concerned, where are we? We are not well put in terms of uh, blood mobilization. We need to have people sensitized and mobilized to okay. have in our blood. The WHO recommendation is that at any given time, one percent of the population will always require blood. So the need of McQueen County is one percent of the population. From the nine theatres that are operational uh, and, and, and the nine hospitals that are offering maternal services, mm -hmm. when you put it on approximations, we can actually let's say that ten points in a day-to-day -day basis. What are some of the key issues surrounding blood transfusion? When you talk about blood transfusion, you start from the donor. You have to be normal, you have to have enough blood, you don't have other underlying conditions which is stipulated there. Uh, after passing through that assessment, we always take your blood. Mm -hmm. When you are taking your blood again, we ensure that that uh, donor is safe in case of anything because we have other reactions which can occur during the, as you donate, but not always. Sometimes uh, they don't tell us that they have not eaten from morning and they are coming at around 4, 4 p.m. Oh, you're supposed to have eaten? <laughs> <laughs> at least, Probably at least. Sure. <laughs> sure. How many of us here have ever had the opportunity to donate blood? By a show of hands. Okay, about 50% uh, of the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't know you need to eat first. Yeah, you should have eaten at least six hours mm -hmm. before donation because after six hours your uh, sugars is down and uh, you are prone to faint during the donation. Before we transfuse to that patient, we need to ensure that this blood is safe, and we do this one by uh, screening that blood. Explain to us yes. the cost of blood, beyond the free that uh, Chip was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's a cost implication, but it's not directly to the patient, but it's to the government. And, and considering from a national level, uh, you'll notice there's a cost of equipping those labs that uh, that do the screening. There's also the cost of the personnel that are actually working to ensure that this commodity is safe for transfusion. There's also the, the team that is also going to do the blood donation drives as well. So there's, there's always a cost implication towards this, but one, one key thing the national government is also pushing is for the universal healthcare mm -hmm. to allow free medical services to our dear Kenyans. And, and with that, that drive of the UHC, uh, that's why we say there's the cost to the patient is not there, but there's the cost to the to the national and the county government as well. If I take a patient to hospital and this is my patient, and then there's need for blood, then that burden uh, is going back to me. Kindly get people to come donate. That in itself is a cost. Kindly explain that. If you go to most of the hospital, uh, they still rely on so the so-called replacement donation. This replacement donation, we can say, is the most risky part of it. We want to move away from replacement donation to volunteer donations, whereby everybody should be able to come after every three months to donate blood. In your blood system, a red blood cell in circulation takes only 120 days. After 120 days, it is destroyed and removed from the system. So why don't we donate this blood? And at the end of the day, it's going to be destroyed. So uh, for a man, you can always donate after every three months and you'll be very normal. Voluntarily. Voluntarily. <laughs> and for a lady, after every four months. Unamuka hivi, unavangu, unakwata mafuto ya jangaleko kio, unasema naenda kutoda. And in this sense, uh, allow me to, uh, uh, to give an applause to the highest donor in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kennedy Sanya has done 99 times and is very normal. Uh, there is a lady, Dafala, has done 73 times in her life, and she's still very normal. 
Is there direct benefit uh, to blood donation that if I donate blood regularly, then probably my system will be cleaner? Yes, the moment the, moment the body knows that we are removing this, at the end of the day, the bone marrow is working and it is manufacturing that blood on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And you don't need any special diet to say that I've donated. Take the diet you have been taking. We always give you a soda, and that is just to replenish your energy yeah. immediately after doing that. <laughs> and you see, that one has led, <laughs> <laughs> that one has led to a uh, problem, misconception that soda uh, actually works in uh, helping to replenish your blood. Is that true? We give a soda just to replenish the fluid part of it. When you talk about that blood, there is the plate of the fluid, that's water. Mm -hmm. So we are replenishing the energy. But the bone marrow will do the other work of producing the cells. Actually what we usually do, it is the, 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 the sensitization that clears the aspect of and the myth of us having come in to donate so that we can get the bread and the soda. Okay. Yeah. The fact that there are some blood groups that are rare and probably the need is higher. Apart from maybe we have other blood groups like Daffy, Kale and all the other blood groups, but we always uh, zero down to ABO. When I talk about ABO, we are talking about blood group A, B, and O. They are the main blood groups. Then we have the so called racist typing. The racist typing is sometimes you say somebody says that A negative, another one A positive. A positive means that the racist is racist po positive. So uh, most of the time is that uh, the racist positive can always receive from a negative and an a positive. But the negative will always get from a, a as negative. Then we have this person known as universal donor, that is blood group O negative. O negative can give to everybody. The problem is he has to receive from only O negative. Wow. Sometimes when you have O negative and there is an emergency in theater of A, we rush this O negative to help them. Mm -hmm. So you can see we are diminishing the O negatives. And that is why as uh, Kenya Blood Transfusion, we are having, we are getting a, a database using the blood banking manager system so that we can know all the O negatives where they are. Mm -hmm. We can map them. Whenever we require them, we can always call them. Whenever we have an emergency, for example, there is a patient in, a, in a, for theater, imagine theater or the other one in McQueenie. Uh, we always get in touch with all the blood satellites all over the country and see that who has the O negative. We have a system. And sometimes we fly even blood from Kisumu to Mombasa to that patient who requires. Sometimes we, requ we fly blood all the way to Mandera to that patient who requires. And that is what we call intercounty linkages. That's why we always say that blood is a national resource. Are the residents of uh, Makweni County donating? And do they even know? where to go do it. We usually do the outreaches, not them coming sometimes. If mm -hmm. they are quite distant, we shall do an outreach at community level so that now we can have those people who come from battle to get donations. So it's clear you're still reluctant yes. uh, to, to actually come out and volunteer mm -hmm. <laughs> to donate blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd like to find out why that is. We'll be asking that question after this break. You're watching My Shani Health. My Shani, My Shani Tukiwa tumekaa kwa joints, unapata kuna ule mseye fulani, unapata umbu wa zitoki kwa ke zina muma alafu, anakuambia my blood is uh, okay, is quite precious. What's the concept? All blood groups are precious to you and it gives the same service. They are all the same. The only difference is the group. Uh, with the issues of mosquitoes and all the other things, <laughs> they like dark places. Probably so they like darker people. <laughs> <laughs> or the brown people. <laughs> Many people don't come out. Waje kutolewa dam because there is that fear. Nitaiza tolewa dam yangu ipatikane iko na ugonjwa or something. So what are we doing? Ndiyo tuone kila mtu amejitoa tu voluntarily aende atolewe. No matter whether itakuwa mbaya ama no. We have the pre-counseling before donation. And after the donation, that is when we get the results. After we have realized that the, that blood could be having syphilis, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, or HIV, we'll do the counseling and refer you for medication. The drive switch are being done in schools. You realize the, the age was not really a factor. 
but now as people progress you realize you are being told if you are under 16 you are not supposed to donate and yeah so we, we usually have a cutoff and, and the main purpose of doing that is because uh, of the consent we usually have a cutoff from under 16 so one of the few things that we also don't uh, want to do is to have the very old people uh, over six, uh, uh, 75 and, and above that they will also be doing the blood drive. So we have a checklist that we use to determine if you are a, you're a healthy blood donor. Can a patient uh, living with hypertension donate blood? We always discourage because of the reactions which can, which can come. But the blood itself has no problem. If we have a medical doctor around, we can, they can always donate. Can we import export blood? We can still import blood whenever we have those uh, mass accidents and the other one, when we don't have enough. But as a country, we want to go beyond that and ensure that we have enough stock for emergencies. Kuna watu wengine wa makanisa fulani wa wanafaa mbanchi imeamdikwa no blood. Yani hata akiwa ni mgonjwa peleko hospitali Daktari ya kiona hiyo nini mbanchi, asimuweke nini, damu. Mm -hmm. For example, during an accident, you have nobody from your village or anybody to come and say you don't take blood group O. Uh, don't, you are not supposed to be given blood. Mm -hmm. If the remedy, if the treatment is blood, we'll give you the blood, stabilize you, then the other things will come we'll, later we'll on. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> we'll deal with that one, that one later. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think most of your questions have been answered. So allow me at this point to thank my panelists. <laughs> now, I'll go the audience as well for asking very uh, constructive questions. I believe you now have a better understanding about blood donation and transfusion. We'll get to hear from the Minister of Health Command Center with the Cabinet Secretary. Maishani, Maishani. The personalized story by Christopher N. Mwikali puts a face behind statistics of thousands of Kenyans who rely on blood transfusions to survive. It portrays how blood is central to the country's health sector and attainment of universal health care. The Kenya National Blood Transfusion Services faced challenges of coordination and management of blood, especially poor donor retention, dry blood banks, structural shortcomings, and the reputation of predicament. Similar sentiments were echoed by audience in Makweni County during the town hall meetings. They also conversed on myths and misconceptions, confidentiality, safety of blood donation, and transfusion. In the last 18 months, we have focused on cleaning up the stain that tarnished the reputation and operations of blood management in Kenya. The cleanup included changes in leadership and human resource, renovation and repair of all blood, regional blood transfusion and satellite centers, among many other strategies that um, uh, we put in place. Currently, we have six blood testing centers in uh, the counties of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kisumu, Nakuru, Embu, and Eldoret, with a daily testing capacity of 2,500 blood units. This is an increase uh, from two sending centers that we had in 2020, with a capacity to test only 650 units of blood daily. County-based blood banks have also increased by 50% from 30 in the year 2020 to 45 this year. Additionally, it's commendable that last year we realized 60% of our annual blood requirements of at least 520,000 units. Kenyans donated 297,000 units of blood and blood products to 282,000 patients. Now, I, I want to thank everybody about this because this is the highest donation we have ever witnessed since independence 59 years ago. 
and we want to congratulate the team that works uh, today so diligently to make sure that this happens. We also procured 16 blood banking fridges and freezers and nine cold rooms, increasing our blood banking capacity by 100% from 24,000 units in 2020 to about 53,000 units. The awaited delivery of an additional 15 cold chain storage fridges and freezers will increase this capacity now to 75,000 units. We also included blood in essential medicines list for sustainability. I think it is also important for me to mention that we have leveraged advancements in technologies, placing four machines in Kenyatta University Teaching and Research and Referral Hospital, Kenyatta National Hospital, the Moi Teaching Referral Hospital in Eldoret, as well as um, the Jeramogi Ogega Odinga Teaching and Referral Hospital in Kisumu. The interesting thing about this technology in those facilities is that donors are attached to a machine that extracts blood products and the blood is reintroduced back to the donor at the same time. This technology is efficient in treatment of cancers, diabetes, and major surgeries. And it's an important, uh, it's a very important inclusion into our management of blood. And this is the first time we have done it ever in this country. Now, to secure public trust and accountability, we invested in accreditation of all blood laboratories and all down the National Blood Management Information System known as DAMU KE. Now, DAMU KE is a vein-to-vein technology-based system capable of tracking and tracing every unit of blood from the donor to the transfused patient, both in private and public health facilities. The system is currently under deployment to connect 36 transfusion centers and 55 high volume transfusing hospitals. It also includes a donor self-service registration portal. So as, as we wind up, it's important to note that uh, blood is a universal equalizer. It has no tribe, knows no culture or race. You don't have to be a doctor to save a life. You can save a life simply by donating blood. So in a sense, we are asking you to be your brother's keeper. Blood, after all, is thicker than water. Maisha ni health. Stay fit, eat right, and donate blood. Maisha ni, Maisha ni As we bring this week's show to an end, we wish to thank His Excellency the President for establishing earlier this week the Kenya Tissue and Transplant Authority which shall be the successor to the Department of the National Blood Transfusion, Tissue and Human Organ Transplant Services currently existing at the Ministry of Health. Uh, in the Muli, this has been a really insightful discussion. We've been able to have an enriching discussion about the myths and misconception because we know uh, these are very critical component in the health sector because it's a matter of life and death. Yes, indeed. Blood is life. You lose a critical amount of it, you die. But fortunately, there's hope. But only if Kenyans adopt the culture of regularly donating blood. And actually, for you to be a regular donor, you can visit the Kenya National Blood Transfusion and Transplant Service social media pages to get more information about the same. Also, make sure you join us next week for yet another informative episode where we discuss more on universal health coverage. My name is Fred Indimuli. And I'm Bintura Komboka, and, and this, this is, is Maisha, Maisha Ni Health. I'm not trying to be a hero, but just trying to do what is right. Giving out my blood because I want to save a life. Together we stand, but we fall if we divide and it won't cost you anything keeping someone else alive. And it's not only for us, but also for the future generations. Nanajua to Kiungana, then Pamoja to save this blessed nation. Be your brother's keeper, because that's the key to elevation. 
and a move in the right direction is taking part in this blood donation. And after all, Maisha ni health. Maisha ni, maisha ni, hey.